how do you grow a company? This is the topic we are going to be analyzing now. This is part of the beginning of the study of a, the use of a competitive advantage. Here, what we're going to start is with growth. When you have identified the competitive advantage of a company, what do you do with it? The first thing is think about how do you grow it? How do you replicate it in other places? Then we'll go into an analysis of competition. We'll follow into the traditional uh, analysis of corporate strategy of vertical integration, diversification, and internationalization. But for now, we start with growth. And uh, here, uh, what is important is going to be the study of growth as a strategy and how to achieve this. Uh, first, we'll be discussing the story of uh, past growth and alternative ways in which the company can grow. And then we'll get into an a study of uh, best practices, which underline the analysis of growth. So let's start with uh, growth in general. What is growth? Uh, basically, uh, increasing the scale of the company. There is not much of, uh, if you want to get science uh, from this. Uh, but one thing that is important to think about uh, in growth is that uh, this is a choice. Some managers are happy, managers or owners are happy to keep in the company at a particular level. Think about uh, small firms, think about especially if you want something as simple as restaurants. Uh, if you have an entrepreneur, uh, he or she creates a restaurant, is happy with the way things are working, uh, it is uh, being profitable and that's supporting the family and it's something that uh, he or he can manage uh, they don't want to be, go beyond that uh, company they don't want to get into several uh, restaurants they don't want to franchise it's something that they can manage or in some cases uh, small companies that uh, grow to the level at which the owners feel comfortable running the company if it becomes too complex, it might be too difficult. They might have to hire managers. Uh, they might feel that they are not no longer under control and therefore they don't want to continue pushing the company to be bigger. This is choice. But in some cases, uh, some managers decide, look, I like the way the company is going. We have to make it bigger. It might be an entrepreneur who decides, I want to make the best company, I want to expand it nationally, internationally, uh, what do I do, how do I achieve this? The way to think about this is a challenge of uh, growth, which is the replication of the sources of competitive advantage. Yes, you start analyzing, identifying why the company is very good. The next step is, and how can I repeat this over and over and over and over again? And this is an important discussion in the sense that uh, the easier it is for you to replicate the sources of advantage because all of a sudden there is something that is explicit and you can understand it and you can teach others how to do things. At the same time, the easier it is for other companies to copy what you are doing. So there is a nice implicit trade-off between do I make my sources really explicit so that it is easy for me to teach other managers, other new employees, and get them into an understanding of what is happening in the company? And to what extent do I enable other companies to see, hey, this is uh, how the practices are done. These are the steps that you do. They might hire some of my employees, and all of a sudden I see that uh, my great idea is uh, merging in many other companies. So this is one of the big challenges of growth. Now, uh, to achieve this, uh, a couple of things that we can have to think about. The first one is, uh, which is the direction of growth? Uh, we have alternative directions of growth. Uh, which one is going to be better for my company? The first one is going to be the simplest one. Scaling, which means repeating the same thing. Uh, I'm very good, I identified, oh, this is uh, why we are good. Then invest and then grow at the scale. And the story here is uh, specializing and start standardizing. All these uh, different experiments that we had in trying to see which uh, things work well and which things don't work well. Let's get into the best practices, which we'll see in a minute. And then standardize it, make sure that this is the set of uh, practices that we think work really well. We hire people that we can integrate. And then we have to think about what is the structure that is going to enable us to work at a higher scale. And here you end up with, again, another trade-off, which is, uh, do you establish a structure at the beginning? Thinking that, look, yes, we have now 10 employees, but uh, 
our company might probably be a thousand employees in five years time or uh, do you have 10 employees and once you have uh, that particular size you start adapting things it can work very well if you are thinking about digital products in which scaling up is relatively simple you can always subcontract much of the uh, support to uh, specialized providers and there is cloud computing that can be done elsewhere in the case of hard uh, i mean not hard but uh, physical products is more difficult you can have a nice uh, production facility do you go to the next scale and have not only a couple of machines more but a completely new uh, production line how big is that production line going to be are you going to make in the investment now with the expectation that sales will pick up later or do you wait for those sales to be realized and then that's when you invest taking into account that you're going to have some time lag between you making sure that everything works well and being able to sell to that uh, increasing demand and then learn from the customers uh, what how do you improve these particular uh, relationships uh, within the company so that the uh, best practices are always being continuously improved that's one story, you repeat, you do the same thing. Another alternative uh, is uh, going into another geography. And the typical story uh, here is internationalizing, thinking about other countries, and then, well, countries differ, laws, regulations, culture, society, economics, uh, long list of differences across countries. Uh, do we just implement what we know works well in other places or do we start thinking about adaptation to the local conditions? Uh, here, uh, you also now have to think about hiring managers who understand those local conditions and that in many cases are going to know much more about them than you do. To what extent are you going to give them, le what level of independence do you give them in terms of uh, their decision making? What can you bring to the new countries? What can you duplicate? And uh, how, what do you need to acquire that is going to be different? Uh, and then also thinking about how you transfer this understanding of the company. There are always going to be limitations in the managers that you hire elsewhere because they might not share the same, not only country level, but uh, also corporate level culture. How do you bring them here before to the company so that they understand how the company works and then you send them back so that they can implement uh, the best practices of the company. Another, uh, if you want subtle to hear, uh, it's not always a story of internationalization, but it can be linked to the story of a scale when you're thinking about growing in a very large country. Not so much uh, products, but services in which you need personal relations. If you are going from uh, New England all the way to the West Coast, uh, there are some subtle differences across different regions within the country that you have to take into account. In the case of the states, there are local regulations that do vary from one state to the other. And there is also the story of uh, managing at a distance. Very large countries, you have to coordinate with others and it might not be as simple as if everything is just concentrated in one area. And then the next thing, uh, or the next, if you want, uh, source of potential growth is uh, expanding into other technologies and this is mm, the story of diversification with the important uh, challenge of getting into new technologies this is not so much oh, we have best practices let's duplicate it, uh, duplicate them over time we have identified the best practices let's duplicate them sorry let's scale let's duplicate them uh, a different geography now we are also learning new ways of doing things in the internet market. So now you have uh, the additional uh, constraint of, uh, is this going to work elsewhere? What do we need in that uh, particular industry? How do we balance uh, the old best practices with the new ones that we have to develop? How do we balance the formal structure that we have established with the informal ways in which we are going to integrate ideas? And then we need a lot of uh, learning. Uh, industry is different. Customers are going to have different uh, requirements. Uh, competitors are going to be different. Uh, let's get into a much more uh, learning thinking. So this requires a different type of, um, these three alternatives require a different type of learning processes. 
the first one, uh, which is a scaling. The idea is uh, core business knowledge and best practices, uh, making things that we know because we have been learning by doing and building them, making them explicit so that somebody else can also do them. Uh, the challenge here is uh, making this very tacit, in many cases, difficult to replicate, which is the source of advantage and something that others cannot copy, making it explicit so that I can teach it to somebody who is uh, going to be part of the company and helps me grow it. Uh, and also in many cases, refining the different uh, routines, practices, so that uh, we do understand what makes our company tick and why we are very good and uh, why customers like us. And now you need to establish a, a formal relationship within the company and between the company and the customer so that you can obtain better knowledge and keep uh, reinforcing this ability to understand uh, the sources of advantage. The next one is duplication. Now the story is going to be uh, not only the best practices, but uh, the management of the company. In many cases, when you scale up, uh, you can do it with the same set of managers. When you are duplicating, you are internationalizing, uh, you need new managers who do understand the particularities of those countries. Now you are getting into a story of, uh, um, yes, how do we share this knowledge? and our entrepreneurial knowledge, how do we apply it to other locations? We have to understand what works here, and now we get into the issue of what works and what doesn't work elsewhere. And then learn about whether those products are appropriate to the new context and learn from that new context and then bring that uh, new knowledge back to the original operations. And finally, when you get into granulation, diversification. Now, how do we transfer our understanding of an industry, our customers, our processes to a different industry with new technologies, new customers, new competitors, new processes. How do we get that connection between uh, those two industries and how do we recombine it so that we achieve a level of economies of scope within knowledge. And then uh, the specific processes by which look, we are very good, now we have to learn how do we develop the process of learning in other industries so that at the end of the day, the company is better because you have all these different operations within the same company. That's managing fast growth. Underlining this is a story of best practices. So how do we replicate these best practices? We have to, first of all, understand the story of replication. We have to identify them. Uh, and this is the story of sources of advantage, uh, what is that customers want, why are they choosing us, what is our customer value proposition, what are competitors uh, providing to them, which resources and capabilities we have, what are the core pay, sources of core competence, and especially the business model. Uh, that's the analysis of uh, sources of advantage that we did before. Now the story is, okay, now you have identified these are the sources of advantage, these are the processes that work really well. Let's get into repeating them achieving a level of economies of scale in knowledge. Once you have identified, apply, 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 which means that to some extent, if you think about knowledge, you are getting into infinite economies of scale. You have already done all the investments. The more you apply it, the more returns you're going to have to for investments that you've done. The recommendation, um, because much of these uh, uh, best practices are embedded in tacit knowledge of the people who were involved in this, we tend to go to the experts to try to understand, look, tell me the story, how did you get to, to achieve this, Why, what was the process, much of this is going to be storytelling within the company, yes, uh, this is how we started and we had all these issues and then this problem, but then we achieved the solution, it worked for a while and then there was this. That's the storytelling that works very well to understand the context in which things uh, were developed and why they were developed. You can also get into stories of manuals, and the manuals is nothing other than trying to get all this tacit knowledge into something that is explicit, so that, look, we have done a lot of work, we failed many, many occasions, but uh, we ended up with uh, a set of uh, routines and rules that if you have this, do this, if you have this, do this, uh, don't do it when this happens, that's it trying to get to the essence of the learning process of developing those advantages. But the best thing is, yes, that's great. It requires direct contact, which is fantastic because you get all the tacit knowledge. 
manuals are good because you have a distilled uh, set of practices, but uh, you are missing all the contextual tacit knowledge that comes with it. The recommendation here is working templates. And working templates means uh, learning by observing, going to a place, uh, let's see how this factory is run, let's see how this restaurant is managed, let's see how this store is being uh, organized and how the employees interact with each other and interact with the customer so that you get a sense of, look, yes, I understand the story you told me, I have the manuals, I understand the manuals, but now I can see, I can observe, uh, and I can understand the context in which uh, the practices are developed. So with this, uh, what are the recommendations, steps for success? First thing is start thinking something that is worth copying. And this is a story of what are the sources of advantage? Is this the best practice? Then identify, yes, this is the best practice. Let's try to replicate it. Uh, work from a single active template. Um, don't go into different uh, places. Try to understand what is happening here, what is actually uh, the potential for this particular set of activities. Uh, if you, something is not working well, go back to the same place to understand, hey, actually I didn't observe or I didn't pay attention well to how they were interacting with me now. I understand the problem I have. Go back and try to uh, see how they are uh, solving this. Copy in as close as you can. Um, we have a tendency to, well, this is how we do things, that's how they do things, so uh, let me just get a few things. Oh, those three ideas are great, but I'm just going to do it the way I want. And the recommendation here is yes, but now you are not really understanding why things are working. You are looking only at the external, what is tacit, sorry, what is explicit, and then you're trying to copy what is explicit without uh, really understanding why this is what we think is the best practice. Try to just copy it half of the time or most of the time, you're not going to understand why things are, why you have to do certain things replicate those, uh, those particular practices and items so that you can get a better sense appreciation of what is happening. Once you know how to copy, then you can adapt it. To some extent, it's a story of learning. You're gonna start painting and you're gonna start free, do, free flowing, free flow painting, but here the idea is if you want to do a masterpiece, copy from the masterpiece. Once you really know how to copy extremely well, then that's when you can appreciate the subtleties of why things are this way and that's when you can start adapting. And then uh, the other recommendation is uh, adapt only when after you have success. Why? Because uh, we're not successful. Is it because that we're not successful because we have not been able to copy well or because uh, this is too complex or because this is not some, this is something that is actually not going to work? That's the story here, uh, try to be as successful as uh, the original uh, location. Go back and forth so that, look, now that we know that this works, that's when we can start uh, making changes. And then finally, uh, if you want to make changes, yes, uh, now you have a new template in your mind, you understand it, but always keep thinking that's how they did it. It's going to continue evolving. If you go back to a plant, yes, they are going to go continue learning but take advantage of that learning before you start making changes to the learning. Those are the recommendations in terms of success for replicating best practices. There is also a discussion of uh, the barriers to, to success which in some cases comes back to the story of the challenges of communicating. The first one is the sources might not cooperate with the uh, transfer of uh, advantages. Yes, uh, I've been working, I've been developing this template, things work very well, now you're asking me to give you all the information, look, I also have a job, uh, I might be protecting uh, my level of expertise, in some cases I don't want to tell everybody because look, I'm the expert here who can solve the problems, but in uh, many other cases it's relatively simple, we are still working, this is uh, an active uh, production facility, this is a restaurant, uh, Yes, you can see me, but uh, I'm still having to do things. I'm not going to be able to devote all my time to explain to you why things happen or don't happen. In other cases, it's a matter of, uh, no, it's not that I don't have uh, the incentives, but actually I don't really have a good relationship with uh, you, your manager. Uh, 
I'm actually not willing to uh, provide you with the uh, information, the suggestions on how the best practices work. There might be the story of internal competition, uh, which is a third issue, which is, uh, well, uh, if we are trying to be the best within the company, I'm going to try to, to keep uh, my operation as being the best, so I'm not going to tell uh, others. Or there might be a story of uh, emphasis on innovation. Copying is kind of uh, not very uh, surprising. Look, all you are doing is copying, so why do we have to pay you more? And it's not, but I'm really good at doing it. Uh, it's very successful. It's not quite the same thing as, oh, I came up with a new idea. Oh, that's going to be fantastic, and we're going to be able to uh, do something better. Then finally, and uh, it's not the source, but it is uh, the, the destination, the one that is not happy with trying to copy. Why? Because yes, we are also already working, we have our, our own practices already in place, why do I want to try and bring a thousand, what you say is the best practice to this operation, we're doing okay, why should I change my way of doing things? So these are uh, the barriers that in some cases are going to limit the ability for companies to continue growing, growing by replicating best practices. So, in summary, uh, first the story when you're thinking about uh, what do I do with uh, my sources of advantage, go. Uh, three different uh, uh, issues, uh, growth in general is uh, scaling up uh, and this is a choice of managers. In some cases, some man companies are, managers are happy to just keep it small, they can manage it. Uh, in some cases it's not possible to grow it well because it is very personal, because you have a lot of attention to detail, because it's highly if you want concentrated on one person. But if you choose to grow, uh, you have to think about replication. How do I replicate my best practices? Thinking that if I can do it very well, my competitors can also copy very well. If uh, replication is very hard, I might suffer, but at the same time, to some extent, that's one way to protect sources of advantage. Thinking about different alternatives, you are going to scale. This is a story of repeating your best practices over and over and over again and thinking about how, what is the size of the company? How do I manage this uh, scale and especially fast scaling? Duplicating is a story of geographic expansion and then it's a story of, yes, I understand my sources of advantage, I have my best practices, I might need to start adapting to other places. And then granularity, which is a story of diversification. How do I go and not only transfer my best practices but also develop new ones so that I integrate uh, what I learn in the new industry with uh, my current uh, activities. And this is a story of replicating best practices. In general it sounds good, it is challenging. Uh, it is good because you get uh, lots of economies of scaling knowledge. Uh, this requires you to identify it and once you have identified why things work well, you can do very well by just repeating it uh, in lots of different places. The process, and uh, there's a process uh, and the recommendation here is identify it and then copy it the way it is. Don't adapt it until you really understand and achieve success. Once you have that, that's when you start uh, adapting it to the local particularities. And then think about that there are always going to be barriers, either because the source of the practice is doesn't, it's not collaborating or the person that has to uh, integrate it, the target is not collaborating, or there is uh, issues uh, within the company that uh, the relationships are strained, that there is a uh, overemphasis on innovation, and there is competition among different teams for uh, resources. So with this, uh, this is uh, what we conclude. Growth as the other one, if you want, uh, and the initial uh, source of use of, uh, use, sorry, use of competitive advantage. And this is uh, the basis for then thinking about other sources of advantage and especially issues of corporate uh, strategy of vertical integration, diversification and internationalization that we're going to see later. Until then, bye-bye.